Welcome to Conscious Crypto. Okie dodo. Let's get down to business. Yep, we're going to talk about uh, basically what Tony Robbins is about to talk about. And it's a video titled, The Most Important Three Decisions You'll Ever Make. And the reality is it's actually three avenues of perception that formulate everything in your life. Belief systems, which comprise your identity, which is basically how you see the world or your perception, worldview, your attitude. All of these words mean the same thing. So when you hear beliefs, when you hear identity, when you hear attitude, when you hear worldview, when you hear perception, these are all talking about the same thing. And at the root of them is your beliefs. So here we go. Every moment of your life, you're answering three questions. First question is, what are you gonna focus on? So the most powerful decision we make, and most of us don't make it consciously, is what are we gonna focus on? We don't focus on everything, we focus on a small number of things and that's what we experience in life. Because you could be focusing right now on the blood rushing through your left ear or the touch of your clothes against your skin, but you don't. Most of what your brain does is distort, delete, and generalize. It makes life simple. So that's neuro-linguistic psychology, neuro-linguistic programming, which is where Tony Robbins' training actually comes from. Now, in studying this myself and taking several seminars and courses, I understand that our brain cannot process all of the information coming in. There's billions, trillions of bits of data from color to sounds through all of our sense perceptions, right? To touch, what are you feeling? That we just can't process it all. And this is why, interestingly, in this Netflix show called How the Mind Works, there's a episode about memory. And here they recall about every person speaking to their experience on 9-11 and how distorted their perception or their memory of that day was. Because when you add heightened emotion or rather a dysregulated nervous system, your ability to actually process what is going on. Basically, your brain's not working as well. The problem is when you distort, delete, and generalize, you miss a lot of your life. And focus right down equals feeling. Whatever you focus on, you're going to feel, even if it's not true. If I asked you, there are two things you could focus on, what you have or what's missing. Boom. Simplified, simplified, simplified. Traders, we can focus on what we have or what's missing. I always said when I got sober that I recognized my addiction was the thinking that something is missing. In every moment, that's all my addiction was, is just a saying something's wrong here and I need to fix it. I need to fix it with substances. Some of us fix it with money, buying things, gambling. Some people fix it with sex or relationships, but your ability to practice focusing on abundance versus scarcity is a superpower. You got to sharpen that superpower. I love this quote from a, a poet, uh, a published poet. She's a good friend of mine, Michelle Kaplan. The lens of scarcity says there's not enough for me. The lens of abundance says there is more for all. So gratitude practices, right? Abundance practices. That is super important. Which one do you spend more time focusing on? If your brain is constantly focusing on what's missing, how can you ever sustain happiness no matter how successful you become? It is impossible. What happens when you focus on what you have? You feel alive, you feel no scarcity, you feel joy. How many of you have lots of things in your life that if you focused on it, you could feel grateful for, you could feel excited about? How many got lots of things like this now? Say I. But it doesn't exist unless you focus on it. And we all have patterns of focus. Do you tend to focus more on what you can control or what you can't control, what's outside your control? Here we go again. Here we go again. Traders, we have to train ourselves to focus on what is in our control. This is why I have always, but more recently, have emphasized my Stoic principles and my Buddhist principles because both of those philosophies hone in on what you can control and what you can't control. Surrendering what you can't control and paying attention and putting energy into what you can control. Now what you focus on, you can control. And if you don't think you can, 
start meditating, start meditating, start quieting your mind, try going to a yoga class. And then that last pose called Shavasana, where you just lie there and do nothing, lie there and do nothing. We got to do this. We got to do this between focusing on what we have or focusing on what's missing or focusing on what we can control versus what is out of our control. Those are huge. And why one of my values in my trading lifestyle and since sobriety is surrender the outcome. What is someone gonna feel is constantly focused on what's missing and what they can't control? Sad, frustrated, angry, depressed? So why are they still depressed? Because they're still focusing on what's missing. And they're focused on what they can't control. And I'll add one more. Do you tend to focus more on things from the past, the present, or the future? We all do all three. But if you're going to spend your predominant time and you want enjoyment, it's the present. If you want to be create a great life, it's the future. So it's a balance between the present and future. I've always understood that basically depression can be characterized by someone being stuck or living in the past. It's essentially past choices all accumulating to the present moment. And I get I don't want to, I've, I've been there and I have a partner. She is beautiful, but she's a therapist and she deals with major depressive disorder and all these different things. And I understand it from a neuroscience perspective, the biological perspective, the psychological perspective, and a spiritual perspective. I understand it. I understand it. And, and I don't want to diminish anybody's experience because it's valid and it has value. But the reality of depression is it's a matter of living in the past. With anxiety, it's always future leaning. And that is why we actually probably spend the least amount of our attention and efforts towards the present moment. It's amazing. It's the only place things are actually happening where life is actually unfolding before us. But yet, like I said earlier, we either think something is missing and we're trying to act to get it back, which often is acting out of the past into the future to try to make the present okay. But anxiety has been defined or described as the fear of future pain, right? A perceived threat that isn't present, but may be coming, creating anxiety or worry, right? Digest that for yourself. We need to spend more time in the present. My meditation game is getting up to about two hours a day and I can't speak to it enough. I'm going to make a whole video on it because I am enthralled about really two things in my life right now, EMDR and meditation. Uh, I love ice baths and I love movement. I love breath work and I love nature and I love connection and I'm all about being of service, but I have to speak to two practices that everyone can do, everyone can do. Um, And that first one is meditation, which helps you in the present and ultimately leads to a better future. Because all we have is now. These three patterns alone can change your whole life. The second question is, what does this mean? Because the minute you focus on something, you have to give it a meaning. Is this the end or the beginning? Is God punishing me? That's why this problem happened. Is God challenging me? Or is this problem a gift from God? See. If you think it's the end of a relationship, are you gonna feel the same way, act the same way as if you think it's the beginning of a relationship, yes or no? No. The meaning changes the answer to the third question, which is, what am I gonna do? So we are creatures of meaning, right? Everything that happens in our life, we are going to interpret through the brain that generalizes, distorts, and deletes information, and we're going to create a story. And that is why we have so many differing views of the world is because we have interpreted our experiences often based on pain and we have projected them upon our present reality, which is why also in NLP, the saying, the map is not the territory is very popular. The map that you have created in your mind of what the world is like is not actually how it's like. So the map is not actually the territory. It's flawed. It's generalized. It's distorted. It's deleted. Number three is all about massive action. You'll never, never hear Tony Robbins not mention massive action. Because meaning equals emotion. Whatever you give a meaning, you're going to have a feeling. If you think God is punishing you, you're going to have a very different feeling from that meaning than you think God is challenging you or this problem is a gift from God. These three questions are happening every moment of your life. And if you're not careful, they take control of you. We are the people that create the quality of our lives. We got to change what's going on here and here. 
So when he's pointing to here and here, there's a big part of this that he's speaking to physiology before psychology. The first thing they should do is change their physiology. Because before you try to take control of your mind, you take care of your body. He's also speaking to, as you can tell, he has a, he's a faith-based man. So he's speaking to a deeper level of existence. Uh, one that I hope we all find. Because, uh, man, I think people who um, ascribe to atheism are actually very afraid and very, you know, anybody who's a pessimist is just very afraid. Those are defense mechanisms. Those are blocking out the possibilities because they want to remain safe in their guarded castle of beliefs, which are really anti-beliefs. So that's their identity. That's what keeps them like in their safety jackets. But the reality is those are actually straight jackets, limiting you, preventing you from living your fullest life. What I learned is that people have an emotional home. Like some people, I'm sure you know, no matter what happens, they're pissed off. Or no matter what happens, they're worried. They worry about other people and themselves. Or you know somebody that's not funny, but they think they are. And no matter what happens, they have a good time, right? You know, or relationship. Is it the end or the beginning? You think it's the end of relationship, you behave very differently than the beginning of relationship. So the meanings we select change how we feel instantly. Mm -hmm. And because we have habits of meanings, people have habits of emotion where they kind of live. So you see people, in some part of the country and you feel for them, like they come by and a cyclone destroys their home or a you know, flood or whatever. And then you see them picking up what's left of their life and you, you pray for them, you care for them. And then three years later it happens again and three years later it happens again and you go like, why don't they move? You know, because, <laughs> because it's what they know. Right. And we have an emotional home that we rarely move from that we find a way to get back to. Mm. But if you change these three patterns, what you focus on, what things mean, finding empowering meaning. And then what you do is controlled by how you feel. If you're pissed, you're gonna behave differently than if you're feeling good. So those three patterns literally control your life. Most people, those patterns are unconscious, so they keep experiencing life the same way. Yeah, that should say it all right there. And within trading, it is so important for us to understand that what we focus on is extremely important because we can focus on abundance or we can focus on scarcity. We can focus on what's in our control or what's out of our control. And this, this changes whether or not the market is a threat to you or whether it's an opportunity to you, whether it's an ATM or, it's a, or whether it's an alley thief about to stick you up. Number two, meaning. We are constantly interpreting, as he said, into our subconscious, which then is projected back onto our reality. So by what Mark Douglas calls the law of association, we associate what happened in the past and we overlay that into thinking it's going to happen again in the future. This is the basis of beliefs. They're actionable units of trust. So it's so important to do your work on beliefs because here, as he just said, the third thing is what are you going to do about it? What action are you going to take? And if beliefs are actionable units of trust, they are true to you. So you can act on them. Gotta say, this is the way. Thank you for dropping in today. I probably will try to keep the, the melodies to a minimum, but I have good time. I have good time sometime. I, you know, you come, come around, you can have a good time with me, okay? <laughs> Is it bad? Like, is it cultural appropriation now to do accents? Like, is that going to be canceled as well? God, that would be a bummer. Well, we'll find out. Nobody watches this channel anyways. Yep.